Okay, great. So um, the recording has started, so I'm now going to hand over to the chair, Councillor Adja Ovax. Thank you. Good evening and welcome to the Licensing Subcommittee today, the 14th of July. My name is Councillor Ajda Ovat and I am the Chair of Licensing. Um, before we begin, if I can have those present to introduce themselves, starting with the councillors on committee, then the officers, the objectors and the applicant. Firstly, I start with um, the introduction. I'm Councillor Ajda Ovat, Member for Northumberland Park and Chair of Licensing. Members, if you can now introduce yourselves. Hi everyone, my name is Emily Arkell and I'm a councillor for Bounds Green Ward and I'm also the vice chair for the licensing committee. Recognised councillor for Tottenham Hill. Thank you. Now officers, if you can introduce yourselves. Good evening everyone, I'm Dale Barrett, licensing team leader. Good evening. Um, good evening, uh, I am Nazia Chowdhury, I'm the principal committee coordinator and the clerk to this meeting. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. I'm Sadiqul Rahman. I'm the legal officer from Harangay Council. Thank you. Now, objectors, if you can introduce yourselves. I'm Con uh, Conrad Bresky. Thank you. Um, hello, I'm Diane Burridge, um, a local re resident near Prince Park, living in Islington. Thank you, Diane. <laughs> And finally, the applicant, can you please introduce yourselves? Oh, hi, I'm Amaranta Wright. I am founder of Latino Life in the Park Festival. Thank you. And I am Robert Goodman, working with Amaranta to put the event on. Thank you so much. Now with the first item of the agenda, filming at meetings, please note this meeting is being recorded and will be available for public viewing. Second item, apologies for absence. Are there any apologies for absence? Oh, um, Jose, uh, Jose Lissayas, who is actually the license holder, who the license holder is currently on a flight, so is unable to attend. Thank you so much, Mr. Gutemann. Um, now on to the third item, urgent business. Are there any items of urgent business? A non-reported chair. Thank you. Uh, fourth item, declarations of interest. Do members have any declarations of interest? No, thank you so much. Fifth item, summary of procedure. The procedure for the meeting has been emailed to all participants by the clerk. For the purposes of any members of the public watching, we'll first hear from the licensing officer. After that, the objectors will present their case and the committee and the applicant will have the opportunity to ask questions. Then the applicant will present their application and the committee and objectors will have the opportunity to ask questions. All parties will then have the opportunity to sum up and then the meeting will conclude to allow the committee to deliberate and reach a decision. This decision will then be provided in writing within five working days of this meeting. Additionally, I'm going to note the ground rules for this remote hearing as follows. Please ensure your cameras are open and that you are muted when you're not speaking. If you have technical difficulties, please use the chat function. Please do not use the chat function for putting formal questions to the subcommittee. If you wish to speak, please raise your hand and direct all communication via the chair. We'll take all papers as read unless there is anything you wish to draw our attention to. All speakers will be allocated five minutes to speak. When speaking, please be succinct and do not exceed the allocated time unless you request for an extension of time, which is at the discretion of the chair. Please do not share addresses of speakers and in the event that there be several speakers for each party, please avoid repetition and perhaps consider having a spokesperson to address all concerns. Now on to the sixth item, which is the application for a new premises license at Lat Latino Life, Finsbury Park, London and for Haringey. Ms Barrett, licensing officer, please can you introduce your report? Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Um, so the application before you is for Latino Life. It is for a time limited license for the two days in 2022, the 20th and the 21st of August 2022. The application has been submitted by Mr. Sejas, um, Latino Life Limited, and it is seeking chair to hold 
a free unticketed um, non-fenced event for up to 9,999 people. Um, Chair, just to um, also say that that figure would also need to include um, staff working the event as well. It's not just the members of the public. So staff, um, catering um, outlets, you know, everyone that's um, facilitating the event, as well as the um, general public will need to be accounted for within that, that figure. Um, the event is described as a Latin community event that is open to all. You have at section 1.2 of the um, the report chair, the, the timings being proposed. So Saturday and, um, and Sunday is from noon until 10 p.m. chair. Um, important chair to note, and I will go back and check, but sunset um, is obviously earlier and um, because there's going to be so many um, because of the, the capacity and that the fact that the the timings being requested for is is um, well beyond sunset, um, the, it means that there's additional factors for the applicant to take into consideration in terms of ensuring safe lighting um, for the egress of patrons on the day is chair. Um, chair, during the consultation period, or the um, responsible authorities were consulted, um, and you have in the pack chair the uh, representation that's been submitted by the licensing authority and also by the residents that you have before you, Chair. Chair, I'll caveat the licensing authority representation in that it is um, it's also part of the business as usual in dealing with large events because. Um, you know, they, they have to, ha they, they need to produce like a, a safety advisory or sorry, an event management plan, which is basically the document that sets out how they're going to operate and how, what, what they're going to have in place. And whilst we, you know, would ask for that to be a final document, say, you know, normally it's 28 days before an event takes place. It doesn't mean that that document is then set in stone because things do change and so there's got to be room for a, a, an organiser to be able to make any dynamic changes that needs to be done to, to um, the plans as they go forward also. Um, to further support the application chair, the applicants have submitted their event management plan and I'm aware that you've seen or the panel has seen the updated document. Um, just for the, the residents, however, the the documents are not put in the public domain because they do contain risk, the risk assessment and security um, measures that these that these um, events um, have under, you know, set in the background. So that's why those documents are not put out in the public domain, obviously. And we've got to be mindful about counterterrorism measures and making sure that we're not given our information widely. To, to the public when it comes to, to crowded spaces. Um, Chair, you have at Appendix 4 the representations that has been received from the residents and the grounds for the representations receives um, speak to the prevention of crime and disorder, the prevention of public nuisance, public safety and the prevention of children from harm. Residents refer to concerns about the lack of fencing and how the increased capacity will be managed in particular. So within your own pack chair, you'll, I should note that the event, is, as I say, it is a unfenced event, which means that the, the, the park will be open to, to everybody. So people coming into the park, whether they're coming to sit on the grass and enjoy, the, you know, sit and picnic and, and whatnot, they, they have the choice whether they then go and, you know, be become part of the event while they're in the park or not, basically. Um, Chair, you have within the pack also at Appendix 5, the proposed conditions um, that's been put forward. And there are also additional conditions proposed by the licensing authority attached at Appendix 6, Chair. I'm not going to run through them, Chair, because you've said that the panel, I take it as read that the papers have been, mm -hmm. have been seen and, and read, Chair. Um, just in terms of background, there are two distinct separate processes here. 
So the first step for anybody wanting to put on an event in the park is that they must go through the, the parks service in the first instance to actually hire the park. That is um, subject to a separate process. Um, and I believe this one will need to go through for the lead member to sign off on that in due course. Um, the second part, of course, is the licensing application because the applicant is seeking to offer um, whatever license activities they have ticked on the application form. And of course, it's that process that you are here this evening um, about to determine, Chair. Um, and just to, to make clear that no license, even if the, you were to grant this, the panel was to grant the license, it could not be used in any event until the parks um, signed, the parks agreement and that contract had also been signed and put in place also. Um, Chair, at point six of the pack, you've got the relevant law and guidance and policies there. Again, I'm not going to run through that because uh, you'll be able to discuss that further with the um, with the legal officer when you go out. I've just put in there the, the relevant sections for ease of reference, um, as with the sections of statement of licensing policy also. Um, Chair, there's also a bit about the outdoor events and how they are, um, you know, a matter that is welcomed, I believe, in general in, in Haringey, having events in within Haringey Borough uh, as a whole. There are also, Chair, the um, licensing officer comments that um, the following is intended to advise members of the relevant aspects of the statement of licensing policy. Um, obviously, the, the committee will need to be aware of the Section 182 guidance. Um, and obviously, in determining in this matter, the aim is about uh, um, meeting the licensing objectives. Okay. Thank you, Mr. In going, sorry, Chair, in going yeah. forward, so the considerations at hand, Chair, is either to grant the application subject to the mandatory conditions um, or to exclude from the scope of the license any of the license of activities or to refuse to specify the, the person being put forward as the DPS or to reject the application, Chair. Um, Chair, I would also remind the, the panel that whatever decision is made, there is a the ability of a 21 day um, stay. So an appeal can be lodged by all parties. Um, Section 17 of the Primary Disorder Act 1998 comes into play, as does the Human Rights Act, Chair. OK, and Chair, there I will. OK, I know in your pack, uh, you have the event management plan at page 35. You've had the updated version of that also, Chair, um, that's been sent on to yourselves. And just to go through the licensing authority representation, Chair, so you'll see that there's been a number of um, queries raised with the applicant. Um, it's been covered of, within that representation on page 97 around the sunset times um, halfway down the page and what times basically advising them that you know if they want to go through till the hours that they requested that there will need to be lighting put up throughout on the egress um, route of the park and that they'll need to be on one hour before sunset and so forth and that a map and so forth needs to be put forward for that um, further questions were asked for clarification from the um, applicants around the PA for emergency announcements, how the SIA and stewards are going to be communicating with each other, that Challenge 25 was going to be in use at the bars um, and that there would be accessible drinking water um, available to the public. Um, a dedicated complaints line to be made available and also chair um, something that's very relevant and now was for there to be um, training and briefing being provided around um, the ask for Angela scheme and to to deal with you know helping and identifying vulnerability of um, women and young girls in particular 
if they're in any distress or any concerns within the event space and so forth, and that the security and stewards were going to be able to, to, to actively deal with that and engage on that matter chair. So you should have all of those updated items within the, the last set of pack that, that was sent through to you. But of course, you're able to ask the applicants any direct questions that you feel you need to as a result of that also. OK, and there are Lend, if you have any questions for me. Thank you so much, Miss Barrett. So I'll take the questions now um, from the members for the licensing officer. Members, do you have any questions for Miss Barrett? Yeah, Mr. Councillor Rice. Yeah. Uh, what 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 amuses me is that how can you have a limited number of people who are on ticketed event? Miss Barrett, when she dealt with she see she talked about 900 odd well if you haven't got a ticketing system where people have been checked in or somewhere recording uh people coming and going then you've got no idea whether you've got 900 or 9000 so how is that hopefully to be achieved and you you're talking at page 95 the note from you and it talks about I paraphrase in terms of being aware of the possible counterterrorism matters. How how real is this? I remember some years ago seeing a, a, a Tottenham Carnival event in Tottenham and, and there were fully armed police in, in attendance. Is that the sort of thing that we need to be cautious about? Uh, no. So the counterterrorism matter chair, there is um well there's a new legislation under the, the protect duty that really is telling us that all of us traders businesses all of us uh, it's our duty to be aware and to be vigilant uh, around you know the need of to consider counter-terrorism measures where, when, when we're out and about in our da in our daily lives um within crowded places though for instance there is um training that the uh, met police offers to um, organizers um, and to businesses to like again just raise awareness around things that they need to take into consideration for counterterrorism. so you know it could be things like um, just making sure that nobody's able to drive through that crowded area so that the barriers are down maybe on the the carriageways in the park so that no one has a route to come in and be able to drive a vehicle through when it's crowded in there basically and the, the event is on. It could be something, you know, just as basic as that, but a necessary thing to be noted in, in their event management plan nonetheless. Okay. Um, and the first question you asked, um, Councillor, I think that's a matter that you will need to unpick with the applicants this evening. So obviously they've put in for this at 9999 um you need to to hear how they're going to manage that and be satisfied with how they're going to manage that but also bear in mind that you know it is a, a huge park and whereas they may have um you know part of the the park space for their event um the park if it's a nice day the park could have that amount of people in it in any event just people just coming in to enjoy that space okay um you know i think it's what what you need to be satisfied is with is that the organizers the applicants have put forward um sufficient me measures and infrastructure that you believe is going to be able to enable them to facilitate their event for 999 nine. okay um, obviously, other people come into to, to the event, they will know their route, they'll come in, they'll stay for a couple of hours or whatever it is that they want to do in the park and then go again. Yeah, it's going to be a fluid situation and it may be the, the case where, you know, I think one of the attractions of this or how this was always promoted was that it was meant to be a free flowing event um, for all the community to be able to come step stop a while and go again really but yeah please ask ask that question of the the applicants yeah because you need to be satisfied with with, with their plans 
Thank you, Miss Barrett. Councillor Arkell, do you have any questions for Miss Barrett? No, I don't. Thank you. Um, Miss Barrett, I've just got one question. I've noticed in the um, proposed con conditions from the um, licensing authority at Appendix 6, page 117, um, some of the, well, it, some of the parts have like questions. So I just wanted to know whether all of the, the points um, in these proposed conditions are, are kind of points that you, the licensing authority want considered or I, I just wanted some clarification. Right, so I think on that page, Chair, the, the question is exactly what um, Councillor Rice was just asking okay. around, you know, how are numbers going to be monitored across the day? It is going to be difficult. I'm, you know, I, I am not going to, you know, I can't hide that fact. So obviously, because all the park gates will be opened, it's not 100% guarantee that everyone's coming through the park gate is coming there for the event specifically. And so it's how is the organiser going to be able to, to count how many people are actually coming for their specific event, you know, at any one time, basically, and, and keep a, a record of, of that. So, yeah, that's something you'll need to, to find out directly from them. Thank you so much. I will now take questions from ejectors for the licensing officer. Yeah, Councillor Rice. Yep, you may ask before I go, move on. Page 103, item 3, deals with the prevention of public nuisance. And on that, the subheading of taking as prevention of noise. Are we going to keep the noise levels down at a festival such as this? Right. So again, um, you'll see in the in the licensing authority representation um, that it has uh, um, mentioned the ability to leaflet residents in a certain radius and that the closest roads to the park. But that will be actually to be up to where the music is. So that would be particularly along the Seven Sisters Roadside and along the Green Lanes side and Endymion Roadside. So that could be done. The leafleting um, to give a complaints line um, number to residents to give them information as to what the event is about and the, the timings for, for the event. And it's also requested that there be a dedicated complaints line operated on site. Um, there is acoustic measures already in place around Finsbury Park and the license holders would need to abide with those levels that are already in place. Um, they are not, um, you know, that this is not your large commercial event um, that would ever reach the type of levels that you would get at a major, a ma a major concert or festival at all, Chair. It's not that. Yeah, it's not it's not promote it's not it's not of that ilk, should I say? Thank you, Miss Barrett. Uh, um, Councillor Rice, if you could just come through me. Do you have any additional questions you want to ask? Yeah, I'm not satisfied with that answer in this respect. I, I just want to know how you're going to keep the noise down. A leaflet is not by giving right, someone so that, a leaflet saying keep the noise down, it's not going to keep the noise down. I mean yeah. acoustic measures, yes, that may do something sort of thing. Uh, so how are you going to persuade these people to keep the noise down? OK, so Councillor Swan, so there are a, there are levels that are preset at, at monitoring points around the park. So the organisers will know that they can't go above those levels. But what I'm saying to you is that those levels are really um, are really there when you're thinking of your very large promoters who are doing concerts. This is not that type of event. So you could the, the the panel can ask the the organizers to make sure that they employ a an acoustic consultant to carry out the monitoring um and one of the the measures about putting down the or giving out a complaints line um is that there is going to be council officers as well, noise officers on duty. So if they get complaints, they also do their own monitoring at those locations also. And if it does breach, then they, they then have to then engage on site with the acoustic engineer from the, from the organisers 
and get them to reduce the levels or tweak it or whatever that needs to be done in order to, to deal with that with that given problem. It may be a bleed that's going in a certain direction. It may be down to wind direction on the day. With, it, it just depends. Thank you. I think we will now move on to questions um, from objectors now. So objectors, do you have any questions for the licensing officer? No, still. Uh, yes, Ms. Farage. Oh, yeah. I uh, think. Um, thank you. Do we have the camera on when we speak? Because I, I don't know what the procedure is. Yes, if you can have the camera yeah. on, please. Yeah, I, yeah. And I'll just put it on. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Yeah, thank you. Because um, I can't see anyone. Thank you. Um, the licensing officer said that the people will be coming into the park anyway through all the entry points. And that there will be no more than 900, no, sorry, 9,999 people as agreed in the application form for the actual event. And that people will be coming and going. I don't know how you can say that people might be coming and going and that there's no concerns about massive overcrowding. Because if it is a sunny day, people will be coming into the park because that's their only escape sometimes. So, so many people living locally. Most people living locally live in flats. And there's so many children that really need that park. So if it's sunny, there'll be a lot. It's, it's, it's summer. It's in August. It's at school holidays. There'll be people coming in. So why aren't you concerned about overcrowding? I mean, this event has been so publicised. The website so shows huge crowds. And I've seen it in lots of local newspapers and other media out there being publicised. So I'm just concerned. Why are you not concerned about overcrowding, please? I don't think it's a matter of us not being concerned about overcrowding. We are looking at the application. The specific application before the panel is for a capacity of 9999. And what I'm saying is that there is going to be, it needs to be differentiated between the people that are coming specifically for the, for the event and people that may be coming to enjoy the park. The park is able to have a capacity of 9,999 people in it on any given day very easily. Um, you know, it has licenses that have been granted to other other organisers, um, you know, for larger amounts, to be honest with you, not larger capacities. And it still and it still enables itself to be be used in general by the public as well. The only difference, as I've said from the very beginning, the only difference being is that this event is unfenced. Thank you, Ms Barrett. Any further questions for Ms Barrett from the objectors? Ms Barrett, I don't know if it's a legacy hand. OK. All right, now I'll move on um, to the applicant. Do you have any questions for Ms Barrett? Um, none from myself. Uh, Robert, do you have any? Uh, nothing from me, no. Thank you so much. We will now hear from the objectors. Firstly, Mr. Conrad Borowski. Yeah, hi. Um, my representation starts at page 101 of the reports pack. pack and um, I hope you've had a chance to have a look at that. I'd also like to draw your attention to the comments on my representations made by Latino Life, which is page one of the additional papers. Um, I'll go through my representation and where appropriate, I'll respond to the comments made by Latino Life. Um, I'm a bit concerned about this issue of whether it is a community event or a major music festival. The um, Latino Life says it's a community festival, it's all, you know, family event and all this sort of stuff. But as people have already said, you look at the Latino Life website and it is a major music festival with huge crowds. No sign of no sign of families, no sign of children or anything. So I mean, where the concern is that if the license authority consider it to be a community event, they might take a, a rather uh, lenient view as to what conditions to impose. Whereas if it's a major music festival, they might be a bit stricter, as 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 compared with their treatment of uh, wireless crank brothers, etc. So I've, I, I've, I've, give, I've included a link to the website, so I hope you have a chance to have a look at that. 
um, Latino Life um, responded, um, but they didn't actually make any comment on my assertion that it does look like a major um, music festival. Um, going back to the website, it, it describes it as being the UK's largest Latin festival and one of Europe's most inclusive festivals. So the idea of it is, is a local community event is laughable. Uh, Haringey Outdoor Events Policy describes community events as being those which are organised by the community or voluntary groups in support of the community for the benefit of the borough or local residents. What benefit is there in bringing thousands of people from outside into, into the local area? Um, on the question of uh, skipping through the, um, the, object, the license and objectives, prevention of crime and disorder. Again, uh, this, this question of um, perimeter fences. Other uh, events such as wireless, crank brothers, open, open arms, require the licensed area to have a perimeter fence, which helps to control entry. Uh, ent and then control enables bag searches on entry, uh, searches for alcohol, drugs, weapons, prevents those under the influence of alcohol and drugs gaining entry. Checks on numbers, checks on underage children, etc. Um, uh, Latino, um, uh, <clears throat> Latino life say, oh, as a community event, we are restricted from fencing in the area of the park that we use. Well, who, who is actually restricting the fencing? Last year, Open Arms, a non-commercial free event with a bar and 700 attendees were required to put a perimeter fence and control entry points as a condition of their premises license application, which was subsequently withdrawn. New Ross, the Kurdish community event, has fencing and, com and control points. Um, I then went on to consider the um, question about numbers. Um, who, how will numbers be controlled if, if, there's, if there is a huge uh, influx of people? Well, the, the Latino life um, solution is to close the gates to the park. So we we will have a situation where not only are um, our uh, attendees to uh, Latino life being excluded, but ordinary park users are, are going to be excluded. And who gives them this right? Do they have um, what legal right do the uh, pri private security guards to mon uh, to um, to close these gates? I've actually asked this question of the um, the. the the park events people in Harrogate Council and haven't actually received the, the reply. Um, on the question of uh, uh, the event went on to say any, in any day thousands of people are walking in and out and they don't get searched or, or supervised. That's right, but they're not on licensed premises and the vast majority are not drinking. Once you have licensed premises, then license and rules and practice apply. Um, a, a, a really interesting point was the, this: this whole question of being under the influence of alcohol and uh, persons get, being under the influence of alcohol and drugs getting entry. Latino life say being under the influence of al alcohol or drugs is not a crime in itself. Behaving badly is a potential offence crime. Being drunk is not. By having bars on site, we can control who we are serving alcohol, and if someone seems inebriated, we can freeze them service. So Latino life seems to have a very relaxed, relaxed attitude on drink and drug use. They, they seem to have no problem with allowing those under the influence of alcohol or drugs on the premises. Wireless crank brothers open arms thought otherwise and keep them out. Licensed premises such as clubs and pubs would not allow drunks to enter. These strict policies, these strict policies prevent people under the influence from getting admittance in the first place. Latino life will admit them and not take any action until the trouble starts. Uh, Mr. Borowski, sorry to just cut you short. We've just passed the five minutes. Is there anything additional you want to add? If you, if you well, do, five minutes isn't really a lot. Minutes. Isn't really a lot for, for yeah. There is quite a few things, but if I'm being cut, I'd like to um, just yeah. go on to what I think is one of the most important issues: is the um, um, protection of children from harm. Uh, I made the point that uh, other events um, have a policy of not allowing entry to those under the age of eight or under, uh, under the age of eighteen. Um, however, this wouldn't apply um, to Latino life because there's no fencing, there's no control points. Um, in the in the licensing officer's report, 
there's a comment on page four, um, section 7.7. .7. The Licensing Act permits children of any ages to be on the premises which primarily sells alcohol, provided they're accompanied by an adult. It's not necessary to make this condition. Problem, as there is no control on entry, what to stop unaccompanied children from entering. I also went up to say that the Licensing Act, section 145, also states, it is an offence for a person in authority on licensed premises to allow an unaccompanied child to be on the premises. I would suggest that the licensed authority has a duty to ensure that the measures are in place to, to ensure that unaccompanied children are not allowed in the proposed licensed premises. And finally, also Latino life don't deal with the fact that other events do not allow entry to under 18s. The only control which Latino life propose is Challenge 25. So an unaccompanied school-aged child is free to roam around the licensed premises, provided they do not attempt to buy a drink. Thank you, Mr. Borowski. Um, I'll now take questions from members for Mr. Borowski. Any questions from members? Yes. Councillor Rice, any questions? Yeah, I'm by and large interested in what's being put forward. But I, 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 I just want to know, have you previously been involved in these type of events? Sorry? Have you previously been involved in this type of event? No, but I've been, uh, I've made representations at other, by other events such as uh, Crank Brothers this year and, and Open Arms last year. What, what would you suggest would be an appropriate method of, of keeping the numbers down, keeping the drinks strictly to people who are entitled to, 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 to be drink? Well, be I think it's a licensed premises, so it should be the, 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 the whole area should be fenced off and have control points. And if 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 the if the issue is is to and people should there should be some sort of um, perhaps a, a ticketed entry system where perhaps there might be a nominal charge of maybe fifty pence or you get a ticket online and then you have to produce a ticket to get in. Um, that way, if you have if you have a control point, you can also you can you can control who's coming in. You control um, underage children. You can do bag searches. You know, but um, you know, without without fencing control points, you've got no control at all. Thank you, you. Councillor Rice. Any further questions for Mr. Borowski? No, thank you. Thank okay. you. And now I'll take questions from the applicant for Mr. Borowski. Any questions from the applicant? No, I have no questions. Um, I don't have any questions. No. Thank you. Uh, so, are there any further questions or points of clarification from any parties for Mr. Borowski? Before yes, we move can on, I just do a, can I just do a point of clarification, please? Yes, Ms. Barrett. Um, just to, to clarify, yeah, the whole idea behind the licensing in 2003 was to do away with all the um, the previous justices' um, measures that were in place. There was restrictions as to when alcohol could be served, restrictions as to where children were permitted on premises, all that sort of thing. The Licensing Act was brought in to do away with all of that. Uh, um, you know, there is no issue with children being on licensed premises. The safeguards that are put in place is that you've got to be 18 and above in order to be able to purchase alcohol from the bar. The onus, therefore, will be on the license holder to ensure that they have got checks and balances in place, whether they're doing Challenge 21 or Challenge 25, that if they are in doubt of somebody's age, I'm looking at them, that they ask them for ID. And there is a set ID, a list of what set of IDs that is acceptable that that person must produce in order to be served. Um, you know, it's not. It, it, this is not a case of um, children aren't allowed on licensed premises. Children certainly are allowed on licensed. Not premises. unaccompanied, the law. Not, Mr. Mr. Not Barowski, not I don't think. Mr. Borowski, if if you cannot interrupt, go, please go through the chair. Miss Barrett, you may continue. Yeah, I don't think the organisers are for one minute saying that they're going to have unaccompanied small children on site. Okay. But equally, you know, a you know a young person can come to the event, yeah, and they will still, you know, they they go to the bar and try to to buy 
alcohol, they should be asked for ID. They, they should be challenged. That is what the condition is about. Yeah, that is the requirement that is normally put in place. That's what we see happening at licensed premises up and down the country. They are to be challenged. Okay, so I think it's um, you just need, need to bear in mind that obviously there are the, the checks and balances in place and it's not a, you know, a thing where children aren't allowed on licensed premises at all. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Barrett. Mr. Borowski, did you just want to add anything? Yeah, I mean, I'm quite surprised at that because the, what, what, what um, the Licensing Act says is that um, children are allowed on premises provided they're accompanied by, by um, a responsible per, per person, an adult over age 18. It then goes on to, to section 145, which I'm presuming you're um, familiar with, saying that um, what, what I said already, that there's just, uh, unaccompanied children should not be on, on licensed premises and that anyone who and, uh, are, are responsible, I, um, anyone who allows that could, could, can actually be prosecuted. I mean, the idea that, that um, children are allowed onto licensed premises unaccompanied is, is farcical. If, if you went to a pub and, and, and children walked in unaccompanied, they would, the licensee would soon have them out because that's just not on. If they had a, a responsible adult with them, that's a different matter. And, you know, I think you're misleading the, the idea, you know, and the idea that you have, to, the only restriction will be if they actually try and get a drink because then they'll be challenged. You know, I think, you know, it's it's quite, the, the, the thing is, it's, it's going to be an unfenced event. Six, six bars it's going to be, right? Children are in the park all the time. They can come in, go down to the light, go down to the bar, you know, chance their luck. They'll be allowed onto the premises. No one was, no one's going to stop them. Okay, thank you, Mr. Barowski. I think we're now yeah, Miss Barrett, did you just want to I was just going to say, Chair, but obviously you're looking at this is in the, the wider a wider consideration here, because within the area that, that the applicants have put forward as their licensed area. There is football going on. There are games going on. There are things that are definitely, you know, for young children to be taking part in. This is meant to be a, a community event. And it's not my, my role to, to sit here to advocate for the event. But I think it's just important that when we're talking about children not being allowed on licensed premises, you know, the area in question will technically become a licensed premises. And there are children that are going to be there, either accompanied by their sports leader or whoever it may be that are going to come along to take part in the sports and activities that are going to be on 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 in display and in in use on 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 the day and there is absolutely nothing wrong with that take with with that happening thank thank you miss Barrett. i think i think we need to now move on to to the next objector um if we can just hear from miss diane Burridge, please thank you and please keep your um representations to five minutes thank you sorry sorry i the camera um yes i have similar concerns to conrad um the applicant states that there'll be up to 9999 people attending but there'll be no perimeter fencing as it is a community event. And I just heard from the licensing authority officer stating about similar events, but she said, oh, by the way, the only difference is that um, there'll be no fencing at this event. Um, so that's my concern. Who will be counting numbers of those nine, up to 9,999 people attending the so-called licensed area, which is not controlled by fencing, is the area of A, B, D and E, um, which um, is a large part of the park as it is anyway, but uh, with no fencing and who will have controls about people buying drinks in that area and moving around outside it. Um, also, uh, yeah, if, and also with the applicants state that if there's overcrowding, um, the organisers say that they will have a plan to deal with this. My concern that if there's overcrowding, is it already too late? There's already overcrowding. And the plan includes, as Conrad said, closing four of the, of the gates, stopping local people entering four gates. And if you have a wheelchair or you're disabled and you want to go into the park to try and enjoy a peace and well, no peace and quiet, but some greenery, etc., you have to travel some way to, to get into another gate. 
uh, which I think is unbelievably unfair. Um, and also, why are we allowing gates to be controlled by a, a private or community company? The, the organizers state that, um, so because it's a, a community free event, we don't need perimeter fencing, but we need to, but other community free events in other parks, for example, the Turkish Kurdish events in Klisol Park, they have fencing, they control numbers coming in and out. I mean, it's just automatic, it's free, that you don't have to pre-book, but they just make sure that there's security, checking bags and controlling numbers. Um, to state that there's got a fluid situation, I think there's even more reason that we need fencing. I mean, if it's a sunny day, as I said before, and a lot of people decide to stay for a long time, it could be very, very overcrowded, which is even more reason, I think, for fencing. Um, if the numbers, if you could ever count them, in the so-called licensed area, A, B, D, and E, became greater than 9,900, surely there would have been stronger conditions for, for the license. Crank Brothers, who are only allowed up to 8,000 people, have got massive conditions. Okay, they have to, people have to pay to go in, but as I said before, other events in other parks, which are free and are community events, still have fencing. Um, I'm very concerned about the drinking, I have to say. Um, I've just now heard the bars, we open from noon to 10 p.m., six bars and 40 food stores, but talking about the six bars, the organizers say, well, the prices at the bars will be the same as in local pubs. Therefore, there won't be, so, whatever, it's, it's more controlled. I don't understand that myself at all. But it means if there's six bars, obviously people are expecting people who are attending to drink and to walk around. Um, they also say that um, I'm very concerned about protecting um, children from harm. The play areas are about 150 meters from the so-called licensed area, which is unfenced. And people do walk around. I can't believe you can just think about the licensed area as being the area for people drinking and walking around, etc. So the children will be could be affected perhaps by um, drunken and disorderly behavior. Um, they're going to also definitely be affected by noise from the music and the pollution from 40 food stores and all the machinery being used. These are children in August, in summer, who need a park and to play for their own mental and physical well-being. So for all these reasons, as a concerned person, I'm objecting to this application. Thank you. Thank you, Ms Burridge. I will now take questions from members for Ms Burridge. Councillors, do you have any questions for Ms Burridge? Councillor Arkell, Councillor Rice, any questions? No? Okay, any questions from the applicant for Ms. Farage? Uh, not from myself, no. Thank you. Mr. Gutterman, any questions for Ms. Farage? Uh, no, nothing from me. Uh, are you. there any further questions or points of clarification from any parties for Ms. Farage? Can I ask this question? Yes, Councillor Rice. Has anybody involved in protesting against this festival, have they been involved with a similar type? event in Harringay in recent years? Um, yes, I, I have objected to um, the, um, obviously, the you know, the wireless festival. So I live locally and I'm very much affected by it. And I was also on the Hybrid Community Association Committee with 700 members, and we were very much affected by the mega events. The reason I'm objecting to this one is because I normally support community events. Obviously, I enjoy them myself. But I just am so concerned, having seen the publicity and the fact there's no control on numbers and no checking on what, what people carrying in and the fact that it's right near play area and people be six bars. So this is why I'm objecting to this one. I, I tried to object to the mega events on principle, which I think really are appalling, but it's a different matter. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I think we'll now move on to the applicant. So, who from the applicant wants to make the representations? Um, oh, I'm coming. going to start. Can you all see me or do I have to do something? Yes, I can see you, Ms. Wright. Okay. Chair, sure. sure. just, yes, just before, before she starts, can I just clarify something? Do we get five minutes between us or five minutes each? Um, five minutes between you. So, oh, so it's not five minutes each. 
Yes, yeah, sorry, five minutes each. Yes, okay. if you both, yeah. <laughs> Just like the objectors. Um, yeah, so yeah, five minutes if you can make your representation, Miss Wright. Thank you. Right, so before I pass you over to Robert, who will address, you know, what I consider some of which are valid concerns, uh, but I'm confident that, you know, what he, he's our production manager. So from uh, putting in measures point of view, a production point of view, he'll, uh, I'm confident he'll be able to reassure, you know, quite a lot of those concerns. But I just wanted to talk a little bit about, you know, really the background of the festival um, and the context, um, really because it's a very, very different type of festival than, uh, you know, than some of the others that, um, you know, the wireless and the Crank Brothers that, um, you know, that have been brought up. And basically this is a local community festival. I am local, it was founded by me and my husband. We're both local, we're both park users. You know, I have children who go to local schools who use the park. I've been using the park since I was six years old, since I came from Argentina. My husband's been here 20 years. That's Jose Luis, the license holder um, from Venezuela. You know, he is also a park user, part of the community. So we began this event six years ago um, as a small community event in Crouch End, as part of the Crouch End Festival. Um, our whole thing is really about showing the passion we have for Latin American culture and, and really bringing this, the quality, the diversity of our music and dances to the broader public. Um, and, you know, really exposing people to things that they normally wouldn't access. Um, from the very beginning, um, part of this project, part of this festival was doing outreach in schools. So we take Latin artists from the very, from the very first year into local schools. We give kids salsa lessons. We do, we, they do have performances in school and it's all part of our kind of aim, which is to inspire people, to expose them to different cultures. And we've had fantastic feedback from the schools. Last week, we're, we took an artist into um, uh, Islington School, into the Arts and Media School. Yesterday, we were in Tottenham at Woodside School. I mean, the, the teachers, you know, just really value us coming in. And you can see the, you know, the impact on the children. They, they see things that they've never seen before. And um, it really kind of inspires them. And it's very inspiring for us. Um, another thing that we've always done from the very beginning, and actually we've um, been doing long before, is and really what defines the festival is that it's about nurturing and giving a platform to local Latin artists. That by that I mean UK-based Latin artists. So we don't bring big international stars. Nobody knows the people that perform. For many of them, it's their it's their biggest you know, the performance of their, of their careers. It's, it's a chance, you know, to really showcase their work, their work. And a lot of, we especially um, do a lot of work with um, creative people from the younger Latin American community. So these are kids, first generation, you know, who are kind of born here, but brought, you know, uh, have Latin heritage. And they're, you know, they're creating something really unique, a unique genre, which is a mix of UK music and, and you know mixed with their Latin heritage and we've been showcasing their work in each of the the, the festivals um, and this is what really kind of drew the attention of the Arts Council because um, you know it, it it's having a massive impact it's having a massive impact on our communities where young people actually see that see their creativity that it's valued they can showcase it to the rest of society and, um, you know, so we are making a big, I know um, the previous uh, opponent, he, he talked about, you know, he didn't see what the benefits to the community, but we're having a, you know, we're very proud of the benefits that we do bring to the community, not only the local community through the schools, but also to the wider Latin community and young people, you know, that, um, it it's, it makes a massive difference to them, you know. It's, and this is part of the reason why the festival has got popular, and and it's grown. Um, 
And, you know, it's happened very organically. We don't do any publicity, actually. In fact, I, you know, I'd really like to ask the woman where she saw this publicity. We're desperate for publicity, but, you know, no, none of the mainstream media really pay us any, any attention. And, um, and the other thing about the, the, we, we, with, um, uh, sorry, the, um, yeah, the, I think the whole point is that, you know, the, 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 the park festival, it's, it's a kind of like a focus of a whole ecosystem of work that we're doing, you know, for the community. Um, in terms of numbers and crowd management, which, you know, I think are valid concerns because it's true, this is a free festival, you know, how, how do you really control the numbers? But um, the whole point of this festival really was to kind of be an antidote to the wireless and, and, and those festivals that really shut, you know, people off from the park for a large part of the, you know, for two or three weeks. And, um, and this, you know, we didn't really want barriers because they've been very contentious, these big walls that shut people off of the park. And, you know, part of our, our whole ethos is to be inclusive. And sorry, Miss Wright, you've, you've reached five minutes. Just if, if you have any other additional points to make, if you can make it um, briefly, and then I'll move on to Mr. Guterman. Okay, yeah. So I'll just end, you know, about the, the issue of parameter fencing, which I know that um, Robert's going to pick up on a little bit more, but we actually did, even though, you know, we don't really want fencing to cut people off because the whole point is that it's free flowing. But we did actually suggest uh, to Sarah Jones of the park, um, you know, that we could put in some fencing. And she said that absolutely not, you know, that's the reason people love the festival is that it's not fenced. And if, 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 we, were going to, if we were going to do the festival, it could absolutely not be fenced. Anyway, I'll pass you over to Robert. And uh, thank um, you, Miss. Thank you so much, Miss Wright. Yes, Mr. Guterman, if you could also make your representations, and um, can you please um, keep it to five minutes, please? Thank you. Um, I think. Um, thank you, Amaranta. Thank you, Chair. I, I think what I'm going to talk about more is actually is answer some of the concerns that some of the other people have made. Um, as Amaranta just mentioned, we uh, we originally, you know, immediately after last year's event, which ran very successfully, um, we immediately went to the park to have a conversation about fencing the park, and they were adamant that uh, because of the number of events that you already have in the park that are fenced off, such as Prank Brothers and Wireless and the events this weekend, they were not happy for us to run a fenced off event, and that we wouldn't get permission to rent the park under those conditions, which is why we stated uh, that we were not allowed fencing. Um, in terms of, um, I just wanted to clarify a few points. I think the, uh, just to um, pick up on the point Mr. Bukowski, Borowski made was about closing the gates. We will never, uh, we don't want to just close the gates. We would leave the gates open. We would just for the time of that point being, we would make them um, and exit gates only for a brief time. And of course, if somebody came up in a wheelchair, we would of course let them through because they will be monitored and, uh, by security. It's just if there was an issue of any sort, we have the plan in place to manage that. Um, the obviously the, the really big point here that everybody is is picking up on is how do we manage the numbers um, and how can we do it? What I what I can tell you is is that this festival. I would be amazed if anybody other than Amarantha knows who any of the artists are playing the event. It doesn't draw a big crowds. It draws, it is more akin to a food festival. We have far more food stalls than most festivals have because it's about people coming and eating and trying the food. And therefore, we have a high turnover of crowd, but not a high latency with that crowd. So people come through, eat and leave. Um, so how we manage that is is that we 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 constantly monitor it throughout the day we take three we've on our site map the site is divided into 25 meter squares and we've picked three particular squares on the site that are high, one high density one medium density and one low density and we look at those squares we count how many people in there and then we multiply it by the number of squares on the site map to to get an average number as to the number of people on site and that's how we can judge it. And that is when we then make a decision as to whether we need to 
you know, our first our first thing would be to stop the music and calm the music down and say, OK, we've got a few too many people. It's, we're getting close to the capacity we want. So let's just take take a step back. Our second thing then is to completely stop the music. And then our third thing would be to start um, shutting the uh, the allowing not allowing people to come in through those gates uh, closest to where we're situated. Um, it is something that we constantly monitor throughout the day. And, um, you know, it, it, we did issues at all with this last year. Um, just to the point, uh, we did have a dedicated, which was publicised on our website, um, and I had the phone with me, and I took three calls on the phone, each of them asking how they could get tickets to the after show, and if it was, uh, and also was it too late for them to come down? Not one single complaint came through on the um, on the, the special hotline that we had for noise complaints. There was one noise complaint that came through the council uh, noise officer, and we went out with our sound engineer and checked the level, and it was within the permitted terms um, that we'd agreed to previously with the council. Uh, with regards to uh, six bars, we've put six bars on the in the plan because they're not all not all of these are big major bars. We are going to actually have three three bars uh, on the site, um, which are container bars and contained within those container bars, which will be the main public bars. And then there will be another bar um, at the rear of the uh, stage for guests to be able to use. Um, we allowed for the extra bars just in case we in the license application, just in case we wanted to uh, put more in. But, you know, at this stage of the planning, we're only going with three bars. Uh, our bar operator is uh, one of the biggest bar operators in the country who are uh, used to doing festival bars and they stick very closely to the Challenge 25. We go above the Challenge 21 and Challenge 25 to make sure that we are uh, covering that off. And on the um, on the playground issue, um, the playground is 100, uh, roughly 150 metres away from the site, but it's 150 metres away from the from the furthest, the northern point, sorry, well not the northern, yeah it is the northern point of the site, 150 metres away from the northern point of the site. All the sound at that point of the site is, is facing away from the playground and facing down. It's also over a hill and behind some trees, so it, it really has no effect on the people attending this event because we're very contained to that area alongside Seven Sisters Road. Uh, last year we went into the field next to it where wireless have their main stage but we are not using that this year. We're bringing in to that field. Uh, in terms of space. Um, um, Mr Gibson, before you yeah, go so any further, we've come to five minutes. If you have any additional points, if you could just okay, keep I'll make this last, Thank you. I'll, I'll make this last point. Um, in terms of space, Ms Barrett referred to the fact that lots of bigger events than the park can hold a lot of people. We have measured the area available in the bit that we're using and looked at what we could fit in there, fit in many times more people in that area if there was a problem, um, not if there was a problem. You know, there is enough space there for people fit that number of people some blankets and chilled it's not like it's a crammed ram space it's an area where people will still be able to relax and sit down and sorry the one final point that i will stop then is the comments about the fact that we're the major latin uh, that we've been advertising as the you know the uk's biggest latin festival i believe we're the only latin outdoor festival in the uk so by nature of that we are the biggest um but it's and you know we're never going to say we're the smallest or the worst well, of course, we're the biggest and the best if we're the only. Thank you. Thank so you. Much. Thank you, Mr. Gitterman. Um, I'll now take questions. Can I also, sorry, can I just make one more point um, very quickly? Um, which is also the fact that we spread it out over two days. We're not expecting more people this year than last year. And the fact that it's spread out over two days, I'd be very surprised if it's even, to be honest, as, as, as full as last year when there was plenty of space last year. And, um, and the other thing is that we've actually had a meeting with the police and, you know, they considered to be, this to be a very, very low risk event, uh, event. They were there last year and they all were very complimentary about, you know, the wonderful atmosphere and the family friendly aspect of it. 
Thank you, Ms. Wright. OK, now I'll move on to questions from members for the applicants. So members, do you have any questions? <coughs> could, you, could you just remind me how many numbers you had last year? Sorry. Uh, 5,000. Well, 5,000. Okay, thank you. Any further questions, Councillor Arkell? Councillor Rice, any questions? Yes. Okay. In terms of security, could you uh, outline your security arrangements? Sure. We have a team of uh, 60 SIA security guards uh, on site who will be uh, from the start of from the day we go on site with the event which is on the uh, friday we try and keep it down to a minimum so we're literally on site one day before and not building for weeks like other events from the day on site they'll be manning the endominium gate road uh endominium road gate um and then the security will be we have security teams by the stages and then patrolling through the site and at all the and at all the gates that are on the seven sister side and stroud green gate so basically um manor house gate the one in the middle which i was to get the name of uh seven uh Trinity park station gate and stroud green gate they'll be managing those gates plus we also have response teams in the crowd um to deal with any issues um we had uh, one one concern last year um where somebody accused somebody of nicking his phone but it turned out it was his friend and it was a personal argument can I have a couple of supplementaries? Yes, Councillor. What about this, the cleaning up arrangements? Cleaning up arrangements, yep. We yeah. have a team of. Uh, throughout the event. They would need a litter, a subsequent litter pick on the Saturday night and the Sunday night, and then they come back on the Monday for a final check and clear up um, and clean the site. Um, to make sure there's nothing remaining. Um, can I also just add to this that we have a really great record on cleaning the park. I mean, every we've on in past the and last year and the year before, you know, every we had comments on on Twitter, everyone complimenting us on how clean the park was on, you know, by the next day. Councillor Rice, any additional questions? Yeah, is this a not not for profit organisation? Yeah, we don't make any money out of this and it's totally public funded. It's we get funding from the Arts Council and the Mayor of London. And obviously the private funding is from the food stalls. And just um, to, sorry, just to clarify, if you're using a technical term, the organization is that is not a not-for-profit organization, but the event is a non-profit making event. We aim to break even, but the organisation isn't officially a not-for-profit organisation. It is a limited company. Councillor Rice, any other questions? No, I'm okay. Um, I've just got uh, a couple of questions. Um, you mentioned previously that it was just one noise complaint um, from previous times, um, and then you responded to that. Um, and also just one kind of you mentioned um, just earlier about um, um an, another incident but have there been any like other um safety issues that have arisen in the past from from your festivals uh no uh not that i i mean i, I was only involved last year and not that yeah. i'm aware of i think we i think we improved um and this barrett will probably vouch for this we improved uh, a lot of uh our, the way we worked uh, over the previous year um bringing in more professionalism, building the event up to be to to manage it. You know, we, we brought in more health and safety officers. We brought in uh, additional staff that have greater experience in running events rather than, um, you know, the our site manager is currently doing um, building the event at Alexandra Palace, uh, the Kaleidoscope Festival. Um, I have many years experience of working on some of the bigger events and for a while at Live Nation. There's, it, it's getting better and better at organising this event. Can, can I, but can I also just mention here that, you know, of six years doing this event, we have not had one uh, incident of kind of drunk and disorderly or, or not one police incident that, I mean, that the police had to get involved in. On the, I think in our, in fact, it was our smallest and our first event, we had one man faint and, um, 
had to have some medical attention or something like that. But other than that, and that was actually when, when you know, we were talking about the festival was like just a few hundred people. So um, yeah, but not absolutely, you know, I mean, it's it's well known and for its reputation for being a very family friendly and joyous event. I mean, my kids go there, all my friends' kids go there, and you know, you see kids on on their parents' shoulders till the end of the night. And and just one more, just for um, clarification, I I noticed in the conditions pr proposed by the licensing authority, um, there was a question about the seven a.m. start, um, about a query about it being at, like a working site. Um, just wanted to get clarification on that point that was raised. Um, Whether it would be my... suitable time. No, that that was my misunderstanding of the form because I thought, what time are we going on site and starting the build? The event time, um, I didn't realize it. I thought it was from the beginning of the build time, which would be 7 a.m. on the first day, but the event time is actually midday. So it's just a, an error on my part. Thank you. Ms. Barrett, did you just want to add a point yes, of clarification? Yes, please, Chair. So you asked if there's any issues or previous issues from the, the previous events that, uh, yeah. that's taken place. Um, to be honest, so the event, it is, you know, obviously it is run as a community event. The only um, issues that we've had um, in previous years has been around having enough safety barriers to cordon off, you know, like the um, the various stalls really that do the hot grills and that sort of thing, just to make sure that there is enough of those on site in order to, to block it so that the public can't get near to the various grills and things like that. But, you know, in terms of, you know, if I'm, if I'm saying if I've seen an event grow and, uh, and um, get better, then certainly where I can say that we have seen that in, in with this particular event. And it's also been, it's also reflected in the fact that, you know, Initially, I think Amaranta was doing quite a lot of it herself, and now a lot of the work, you know, she, other people have been brought in and been given definitive roles to carry out and do and um, and and get things right on, on the day. But as ever with these events, it is a an ongoing learning process, and I'm expecting that for any any promoter that there is learning to be had year on year as they go forward. Thank you. And now, any questions from the objectors for the applicant? Yeah, just a little point on on the um, I've referred previously to the um, Latino Life website. How is it that when I look at that website, I see the the, the um, videos of the two stages from previous years, and I see huge audiences, and I think to myself, well, you know, is is this what is going to happen? Um, you're bringing you try you want to bring in thousands of people. And yet you're telling me at the same time it's a nice, friendly, fr friendly, um, family friendly uh, event. That's not what it says. That's not the impression you're giving on, on your website. Your website gives an impression of a major, major music festival. You just have to have a look at it. You see it. You just see there's thousands I of think, people. I think. Can I, oh. can I just say something? I, I, there's, there's two things here. Um, I mean, firstly, I think with videos, we obviously want to present it to our audience as something that's really fantastic, you know, so we obviously want it to make it, you know, look like it's it's a, it's a big festival, but that's to our particular audience of Latin, you know, our Latin community audience, because they, um, you know, it, it's more attractive to them. So obviously there's a kind of promotion side of things. But it is very much a community festival and it will never stop being that it's 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 a larger community festival and it's growing, but it still has that at, at its core. And I don't know if you want to say something, Robert. No, I mean, it's essential what I was going to say, and I, I think that videos, you know, can be a little bit misleading sometimes. Of course, we painted in the best light we possibly can. Um, you know, yeah, um, we, we grab when... when it's got most people there. So actually what you're seeing in the, the videos is actually makes it look a lot bigger than it really is. But, you know, you you can do that with, with all sorts of tricks from videos. And the other thing um, I would say is that the Arts Council 
you know, they've given us more and more funding every year because they can see the positive contribution that we're having and they want us to have impact. And we do, we're a, a very small organization, but we have a big impact, but it's a very positive impact. So yes, it's a community, but but we want to reach as, as many people within our community as possible because it has such a positive impact on them. Thank Sorry, you. Uh, Robert, I interrupted you saying something, were you? No, 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 I'm Thank done, you. it's fine. Yep, any other questions from the objectors? Yes, Mr. Borowski. Yeah, I'd just like to um, uh, point out, last year I complained to the Friends about the, the Friends of Finsbury Park about the support from the club. Uh, mainly because uh, I, I live uh, in um, to the, to the northeast of um, the park, and not sort of northwest of the park, and I can hear the noise quite um, clearly. And my impression was the noise was a lot louder than, for instance, Crank Bros uh, in the previous fortnight. In reply, Clive Carter, the joint chair of Friends of Frinsbury Park, wrote, We had expected Latino life to be much the same as La Clave two years ago. However, a number of people, including me, noted that partway, part, partway through the afternoon, the character of the music changed and the volume increased. The music and the volume became broadly similar to, similar to wireless, which is not a recommendation. The Latin event had changed from one to two, three stages, which was perhaps a stage or two, a stage or two too far. And that's what that's the ch yeah. uh, joint chair of the the uh, Friends I mean, of Park said last year. We have enjoyed the support of Friends of Friends Park and we still enjoy their support. In fact, recently there was a viewing, because I don't know if you know, but we had a documentary made about us as a model event because it is so inclusive and because of all the work we're doing, especially with young people. And, you know, they all gave us their full support. Regarding the music, I did talk to Clive about the music and he doesn't, he obviously doesn't like that music and maybe some people, I'm talking specifically about the music of the youth stage, which is more urban Latin music. But, you know, Latin music has lots of variety and, and there's music that younger people like and there's music that older Latin people like and we have to also represent the younger generation. And it may not be the music that he likes, but we have another stage for that. That's actually why we've got these two stages. And we, we think we balance it out really well. So in fact, a lot of people said, oh, it's great. I could leave my kids at the, at the youth stage and I could go and enjoy the salsa and you know the Mexican dance. So we, we actually want to give something to everyone. And regarding you know the young people, we, we, we've, I don't know if you've seen some of the feedback video in the documentary but actually some young people said to us I wouldn't even I wouldn't I'd never go to a park if it wasn't for these festivals for this festival sorry um this is Latino youth so actually we think that it's really nice for one day that maybe a young person who wouldn't go to the park normally actually does come to the parks so it's I you know that's my answer I don't know if you want to say anything Robert um uh, no I've other than the fact that you know reggaeton is a form of latin music that's popular and i thought the license was about whether or not we're running a safe event not the musical taste of the event yeah i, th I think we should um make sure that, that the questions are just relevant to the current licensing objectives um if we can please so objectives do you have any additional questions none okay I think we'll move on now to the summing up. So can each party now sum up, starting with the licensing officer, then objectors, and finally the applicant. Please keep succinct. Thank you. So Ms Barrett, if you can start, please. I have no specific summing up for you, Chair. Thank you. And now the objectors. Uh, Mr Borowski, do you wish to start to sum up? Uh, the, only, the only thing I want to say is I hope the... Um... Uh, licensing committee, um, bear in mind what I've said about the issue of unaccompanied children being um, having unrestricted access. Thank you. Thank you. And sorry, Chair. Sorry, Chair. I know you're summing up, but can I just make clarification on that, please, specifically? So the legislation yep. actually says that it is, it is unlawful to allow any unaccompanied children under the age of 16 to be present 
on authorised premises which are exclusively or primarily used to supply and consumption of alcohol on the premises. That is not what you have here. Yeah, this is it's, this is not an exclusively alcohol driven matter here. So, you know, I'm reiterating again that things need to be held in, in, in context, please. Okay. Thank you, Miss Barrett. And um, to Miss Barrett, please, if you could sum up, please. Sorry, sorry, my camera takes a while. Um, I, I'm just, uh, as great as a community event, it's great that is improving, increasing popular, uh, popularity. I just can't understand why there's not a concern about overcrowding. Other events that I go to in other parks are community events, they're free, and they don't have huge boundaries or fencing, they just have simple fencing around just so that numbers can be counted in going in and out and controls on what people are carrying in to the area and out. So I'm not comparing fencing as in horrible, as we've seen um, just recently with the mega events, but uh, I'm talking about how other community events run, run um, their um, activities in parks. And I'm shocked that the council officer, um, Sarah, was saying you can't have fencing. I can see why she's saying that because we have massive fencing cutting off a lot of the park for months now, for weeks and weeks over no, July and August. Okay, uh, but what I'm saying is, I'm still very concerned about overcrowding. I'm really concerned about people drinking and walking around. And I just hope I'm wrong. I just hope I'm wrong, that's all I can say. Can I just reassure you on a, on a, on a few things? This, I mean, you know, this, this is a niche event. It doesn't attract this, huge this numbers. Right. If you, you will have your chance to sum up now. So. Okay. If, All right, sorry. Please, no interruptions. Yeah. Um, yes, sorry, so please, if, you can, if you can please um, sum up. Oh, is that me? Oh, I'll say. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I was just going to say that because we don't have any big names as artists that attract numbers, our artists just don't attract huge numbers of people. And also, these, this, you know, Latin American music is very niche. It will never attract, you know, the mainstream masses. Um, also, this is over two days now. I my worry is actually that we won't get, we won't get enough people. We have no marketing budget, and you know I'm very confident that we won't get more numbers than last year. And over two days, it will be more spread up. I I really don't think that you know there's any concerns. Into we we know the reach we have because we work in in this area. We work in the Latin American community. We 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 do events all the time. Um, and we know the reach we have, and um, yeah, I, I, for I understand it's a concern of yours. I would be concerned if I if if you know I didn't have the information that that I have that reassures me that we you know in this instance it's not really a concern. Thank you, Miss Fry and Mr. Gutterman, If you could sum up as well, please. Yeah, I I just um, the reason we put in for the increased license was not because we thought we would get a lot more people in. It's because what we wanted to do is we wanted to make sure that we had the proper rigour in place and that we were being judged by Ms Barrett and her team, that we had enough infrastructure in place to cope with a few more people if we went over the 5,000 we had last year, not because we would, thought we were going to go massively over, but we would rather have extra infrastructure, a better layout, a better setup to make sure that everything works. And we, by no means, you know, we recognise that this is, um, if, you know, if we do have problems, then we won't get a licence next year. And we want a licence next year as well, and the year after, and the year after that. So we are doing everything we can to make sure this event runs very safely and that we don't have any of the issues or um, problems that some of the objectors uh, feel we might. Thank you, Mr. Gutterman. So thank you all. We have now come to an end to this item. I ask that all parties please leave the meeting room so that committee members have an opportunity to deliberate and make a decision on the application. The parties will be notified of the decision in writing within five working days of this meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you very much.